Hey YouTube, welcome back. This is Steven, I'm the Idaho Fabricator. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I mounted these bed tie downs on my wife's 87 GMC pickup. These tie downs are uh, designed for a Ford F-150, I think 2000 to 2017. And uh, today I'm gonna to show you how I mounted them on the bed. And I'm gonna show you how to drill and tap holes in steel. So stay tuned. Okay guys, here's the uh, here's the basically the uh, design that I came up with. This is your tie down here, pretty simple. Um, and then I just took a piece of 3 16 flat steel, okay? Drilled and tapped some holes. And then uh, the finished product, give you an idea what it looks like. Get a light under there. It's pretty nice and clean. Um, I'm gonna paint that to match the, the bed so it'll really disappear. And I tucked it up up under the lip of the bed so really it doesn't show unless you're uh, you know unless you're getting down on your knees and looking under the bed so that was the idea here and uh, I thought I would just take a minute and show you how to drill and tap holes in metal just in case uh, you've never done it before so let's head over to the workbench and uh, I'll show you what's going on okay if you haven't bought one yet um, I highly recommend you get a tap and die set um, I've had this set for th like 30 years and um, they just they last forever if you take care of them and basically you've got your taps and your dies okay and then you've got several kinds of uh, tap wrenches this one here um, unscrews and then the, uh, the taps fit in this little V here okay and then you can use that to to spin it in all right that's one one way and then another way is uh, with this guy here, okay, and you can see inside there it's just got four sides and the collet, as it tightens up, it holds the tap. And, uh, and then there's a little handle here that uh, fits inside of here, right, and then you can spin this in, so you can, you got couple of ways to do it this way or this way and uh, what's nice about this hand this tap handle here is if you don't have or if you're doing something where you can't get to spin this this fits a 3 8 socket so you can actually use a ratchet and that's pretty handy um, in fact I've used a ratchet before quite a few times and um, it, it's worked really well so um, so there there's your taps there's your dies and then there's something else in here, and I'm going to show you this because it's really handy. It's a thread gauge, and you'll notice here on the gauge, I don't know if I can get it up close enough, you can see it, but there's numbers, okay? And those numbers represent threads per inch, all right? And you have one side of its coarse, and then this side of its fine thread, okay? Super handy. So let's say you've got a, a bolt. Let me grab this bolt here. And... Uh, and this is the bolt you want to use, but you don't know what size tap you're going to need, okay? So you come over here and you just kind of fit it in, see which one it fits on. And no, those are too coarse. So then you come over here and this is 20 threads per inch. Nope. And then you go to here. Oh, that fits really nice. So I know that this is a 24 threads per inch. And I know it's a 5 16 bolt, so it's 5 16 24 is the thread pitch, okay? So then what you do is you'd go to your, your tap and dies, and I'm hopefully you guys can read this. I'm not sure if it'll go, but it says 5 16 by 24, okay? And then a little bit down farther, it says use drill, and this is 17 64 okay? It's really important to um, size the hole properly for the tap. You don't want too loose of threads or too tight of threads, okay? And people that are way smarter than me have already figured out what size holes you need. So, and all that information is right on your tap. So that's really handy information to have. So 
I've already drilled a hole at uh, 1764 in this piece of metal here. So we're gonna tap a hole. I'm gonna show you how you do it. So I did wanna mention before I tap that there's different kinds of taps. And you'll notice that this one here kind of comes to a point, okay? And that's your standard tap. And you'll notice that this one here is flat on the front. And this is called a bottoming tap. And you would use this for, you would, you would start your threads with this, thread it down into the hole, and it would be a blind hole, something that didn't go all the way through the material. And then if you wanted the threads to go a little deeper, you'd use a bottoming tap and you'd go ahead and run this down, and this would allow you to get, as you can see, you know, one or two more threads toward the bottom. So bottoming tap, standard tap. Um, I just wanted to show you the difference so that if you knew what they looked like, you'd, you'd recognize them. So, so let's go ahead and tap this hole. And uh, we're gonna, I kinda like using this guy, so that's what we're gonna use. And it's really important also um, to use some type of cutting fluid, okay? I use this rapid tap for metal, for, for uh, ferrous metals like cast iron and steel. And if you're doing aluminum, you need to get aluminum stuff. Believe it or not, there's a difference in the way it works. This works really good for aluminum, and uh, so it's worth the investment. Um, so if aluminum, use aluminum cutting fluid. Steel, use steel cutting fluid. And usually what I do is I put a little bit of this on here just to get me started. All right, put one on each on each fillet there. And then because it's tapered, you can actually kind of get it in the hole, okay? Now what I usually do is I kind of, I look at it this way, side to side, and then I come around to the front and I look at it this way and I just kind of see if it's straight and I turn it a little bit and just kind of check it a couple times, make sure I'm going in straight. And then I've turned it maybe three quarters of a turn. So I go ahead and back it a little bit, check it again, and then I make another turn and then back it off and then make another turn and back it off. And the reason that you're backing it off, you can feel it when you turn it in the other direction what you're doing, let me show you on this, on a bigger tap. What you're doing is you're taking all the cut stuff and you're putting it in these little fillets here, okay? And that's really important because it gives you clean material. It doesn't, you know, get in the way of cutting the new threads. So you keep turning it a little bit, back it, turn it, back it, and I give it a little, little extra cutting fluid, turn it, Back it up, and you can see the junk. I don't know if you saw it, but it falls out down below. It goes into those little fillets. So you go forward, half a turn, back it up, forward, back it up, forward, back it up, and then pretty soon, it just threads all the way in. Okay, and then I just twist this thing off there. Okay, got our bolt here. Look at that, threads right in there. It's got a little dirt in there. Let me clean that out real quick. Brake cleaner, my favorite friend. Okay, now it'll go in, should go in by hand, yep. All right, see? It's really easy. Um, just want to go forward, back it up, go forward, back it up. Make sure you keep it straight. Make sure you use cutting fluid and um, you're able to put some threads in a piece of metal. Super handy technique. I highly recommend you get a tap and die set and um, it'll just change the way you approach your projects. Um, you don't always have to count on using a nut or a washer or something like that. You can just thread the material or you can fix threads on something. So super handy tool. You got to get one. 
Uh, thanks for watching. This is Stephen, the Idaho Fabricator. Be sure to like and subscribe. I, uh, I love hearing from you. And um, thanks again.